everyone. Thanks for joining us for our second episode of The Coffee Project. Today we have James on again, which is great because we're going to be talking more about everything project management strategy. But before we begin, I just want to ask you, James, how was your Easter long weekend in isolation? Did you do anything uh, that inspired you? Uh, isolation, yes. Not too much. Fortunately, I have a family that I've spent it with. So uh, we spent a lot of time outside, which was lovely. And um, a few mountain biking trips with my youngest, um, mm. obviously abiding by the social distancing rules. Um, lots of people are out there, um, which was nice to see. And uh, yeah, beautiful weather here in Sydney. So um, it was a good long four days. Good to have a break. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I do feel like people have been out and about a lot more, which is interesting. <laughs> oh, yes. And what about you, Hannah? What did you get up to? Um, it was just the usual. I had church on Sunday. Um, but otherwise, just I finished my puzzle. So I'm a bit, I'm at a bit of a loss now. What I oh, no. Do. Yeah. But anyway, it was a really nice double weekend. So I'm glad we had it. Mm. Great. Yeah, so today we're going to be talking about the S word, strategy. Mm -hmm. um, before we begin, what do you think is a major obstacle for implementing strategies today, especially in the sort of current environment? So one of the biggest challenges that I see, and actually enough, I was speaking to a friend who's a strategist uh, over the weekend. So mm -hmm. a lot of organisations, they have their typical three to five year strategy uh, written down and captured, or they're going through a process of planning out how to uh, take on the sort of this year's um, elements or strategic goals. And unfortunately, they're not worth the paper they're written on. In fact, the extent that they're probably toilet paper is probably of more value than the, the strategy itself and all the effort that went in it. So um, what organisations are having to do, obviously, is go back to basics and really understand what they can do in these very uncertain times. Yeah. Wow. That's actually so crazy to think about how much things have just turned around. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, okay. So last week you mentioned that PM Logic has a product called SIP or st uh, Strategy Implementation Platform. Mm -hmm. So could you tell us what it stands for and what it means or how you came up with the name maybe? Yeah, sure. So the Strategy Implementation Platform helps executives deliver their strategy through project management in a sustainable way. Um, we came up with it because we're trying to differentiate the platform, which is based on Microsoft Project, by the way. Um, so we, we came up with strategy implementation platform because it's more than a project management tool. And there's a, quite a lot of urban myths around what is project management. A lot of people think project management is just about delivering to time, to cost, to scope. Um, yeah. That's very much uh, that's needed, but that's not all project management. So we like to think as project management as helping executives deliver their strategy. Hence, hence obviously the name. Um, within PM Logic, we've got five key principles that we focus on. So those are purpose, people, practices, platform, and performance. So mm -hmm. we've codified those principles within the platform to give you an example. Purpose. So why are we doing this? And often people who are working within organisations are not able to clearly articulate their why. So those of uh, the listeners or viewers that have seen Simon, Simon Sinek, um, it starts with why. And if you haven't, it's definitely worth a, uh, a read or a view. And I'm sure we can put up a, a little video uh, mm -hmm. link uh, later on. Yeah. So it starts with why. Why is really important, the purpose of why we're doing things. So hence purpose being the first of the five P's, and that's all encoded within our strategy implementation platform. Ah, oh, I see. So you mentioned that it exists on the Microsoft Project um, platform or structure. So that kind of suggests to me that there are already existing structures. Of course there are because people have been in projects for a long time. Um, so there are two parts to my next question. The first is, um, what are current platforms missing that SIP goes above and beyond for? And the second is, if SIP is on the Microsoft Project platform already, what exactly is it? Um, is it a method of using the project or a way of configuring the project to better fulfill um, a strategic goal? Um, I.e., what's PM Logic innovating on um, that doesn't already exist? Okay, so. Um, maybe I'll start with the second question first, and then yes. you have to remind me of the first one so I can go into it. 
So the um, we um, have chosen Microsoft uh, to start with, and so Microsoft have a, a cloud suite of products, and we refer to that as as their platform. And so we're leveraging the uh, Project Online and Project On Prem. There's other uh, products as well that are part of SIP, uh, but though the Microsoft suite is is the major part of it. And so what we've done basically is configure um, a like a, a vanilla version of the um, Microsoft Project Online and on-prem so that um, our clients can use that. So what we've been doing this for about 10 years now, and what we've found is every time we go to a client site and they've got SharePoint and other types of online or collaborative tools, we go in and we'll start to configure to help them improve their use of digital um, mm. One of the benefits of this, obviously, for example, is uh, efficient meeting management. So we're in there, we spend a bit of time configuring their platform, they get a lot of value out of it, they want more and it carries on. We're finding that um, over the last 10 odd years in doing that, that a lot of that configuration has been common. So we start from zero and we work our way up. So by putting our effort into building SIP, what we're doing for our clients is allowing them to take advantage of those common elements. So it's that sort of 80-20 uh, rule. So 80% is common, 20% is customized or configured specifically to the client's needs. And that's things like language, et cetera. So now we've got, we've, we've innovated um, some of those solutions within the platform to um, create a, an offering that clients can use to better align what they're doing to their purpose, ultimately, as I was saying before. Right, okay. Now, remind me of the first question, make sure I'm up, I've answered that one. Yeah, I think you actually pretty much covered it. It was like, what are current platforms missing that um, SIP kind of covers? But I think you did well to cover that question, so okay. you might move on. Great. Um, you mentioned that the 20% would be um, customised specifically to the client. Um, so is that uh, what PM Logic will be specifically around to support? I guess, like, what does it look like when you're working with the client? Yeah, so, um, so customise, and that's the words in this world you have to use very carefully. So one of the things that people don't want is a customised solution. And the reason behind that is when you go to upgrade, if you customise, it costs a lot to upgrade because you take on, say for, say for example, Microsoft releases a new version. And yeah. so you then need to upgrade to um, be um, on the latest version for security reasons, compatibility and other reasons as well. So mm -hmm. you go through that um, uh, update, but if you customize, it means you have to update all of those elements that you customized as well. Right. So what we focus on is configuring. So when I say customize, what I mean is, is the contextual configuring to a client. So for example, risks so a lot of organizations use the iso 31000 framework which is a five by five matrix so from the, the lowest level sort of a risk that's a low impact and it's a low probability right up to a high impact high probability so that five by five matrix is within our sit platform now some organizations use a three by three so if they want to continue using three by three, then all we need to do is, is configure the solution to three by three rather than five by five. When the upgrades come through, it still means we can still upgrade relatively easily. Um, it just means that it is tailored specifically for them. So it's more useful for them. And then just on our support, so by having this sort of 80-20 rule, by having 80% already done, what that allows us to spend more time on is the training. So we're able to train up the client staff in how to use this solution and also change management. So, for example, going from meetings which are done face to face with paper and meeting minutes, et cetera, to meetings that are done online, which is all virtual. That's quite a considerable change that people have to go through. So we spend a bit of time helping our clients through that change. Ah, oh, OK. OK, cool. That makes a lot more sense. Um, so, final question, mm -hmm. who would find um, SIP most useful? Yeah, that's a tricky one to answer because uh, it's useful at all levels. Maybe if I can sure. expand that question to, there's probably four key groups of people that find it useful. Um, okay. So, 
executives, managers, team members, and the PMO. So an executive finds it useful um, because they will see real time the status of activities and work. They'll be able to view how are um, projects, for example, progressing towards delivering their strategic goals? What are the operational key performance indicators? And that can all be done within one dashboard as a good example. So they're able to better govern um, their overall sort of projects and programs, as well as ongoing or business as usual work. Managers, so they're better able to control work that's being done because they can see what their team members are doing. They can see progress against the plan. So a manager in this case could be a project manager, a program manager, but also a general manager or a business manager. And they've got people doing work. So that's the manager, the team member. So they're able to see what's on their plate because they've got a list of actions. They've got a list of activities within a schedule. They've got issues and risks. They've got potentially dependencies they need to manage. So there's a whole heap of information that they can see straight away and they can see the alignment as well. They can see how their particular activity aligns to achieving the strategic goal through a number of steps normally, obviously. So that's the team manager or team uh, person level. And then finally, the PMO. So PMOs are often um, misunderstood, I think. And so what the PMO, uh, what SIP does for the PMO is gives them the ability to, to, to pro provide measurable value. And that's by incrementally increasing the maturity in the way organizations operate and perform and ultimately deliver their strategic goals. So an example there is aggregated reporting. So they're able to, to, from a list of projects, pull out the status report and then pull out their view on where the executive need to spend some time to investigate, to help, et cetera. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. I think um, what we'll do is we might post all this stuff up so people can have a look as well. Um, so thank you so much, James, for telling us more about SIP. Um, and thank you so much to our watchers as well. Um, we'll put some stuff up for you to have a look at. All right. Thank Thanks, you. Anna. Cheers. Take care.